Hi guys, welcome back. So first we look at our stocks. Our baby Neo looked like it was breaking the support yesterday. If it can climb back up the support of 55 and stay above within the next two, three days, that means we might have just had our golden dip. So that's why we bought a call option yesterday when it was near the lowest point. So we need to monitor it to see whether it would drop further to the next support of 49, okay? But if it can stay above the 55 level for the next following days, then we are okay, okay? Next is our EH. As I had expected on Wednesday, I said that be prepared that it would come back and consolidate more. So these few days it's been consolidating and it had a drop yesterday because of the lawsuit. So right now we need to be a bit patient and hope the team of Yihang would come back from the Chinese New Year holiday soon and prepare for a better and bigger fight back. Next is our Luo Kang technology. After a crazy week of run up from 60 cents to the high of almost $4, so that's six times of gain. So now it's coming back down to backtest and going sideways to consolidate. Something to point out is that a lot of people said this is a pump and dump and the valuation doesn't make sense and doesn't justify for the huge run up like this. Let's see. First of all, this stock was beaten down for years before last week, dropping from $10 all the way to 60 cents mainly because the technology was too advanced too early, the applications were not widely used and that would affect their revenue very much. And also because they were acquiring a lot of companies at the same time. So that's why they were also running through a huge cash burn and had a very bad balance sheet. But this is the problem that was basically solved in this two weeks after raising funds for three times by diluting shares. To talk about the evaluation, so now we know they have the cash of at least 120 million from all the fundraising in the two weeks. Obviously, we don't know what they're going to do with it specifically. Which company, which technology would they acquire? But let's just randomly assume they would use this 120 million. Let's randomly say they would invest this money in our baby Neo stocks this year, okay? That's just random. And we assume that would give them about 100% return. So that would mean they would have the earning of 120 million. Let's say we give it a PE ratio of 15. That would give them the evaluation of 1.8 billion or a PE ratio of 30 for a high growth company and that would give them a market cap of 3.6 billion versus the current market cap of 700 million. That means we still have a lot of upside just based on this. Now of course they're not gonna spend the cash on investing a stock but my point is that right now after the few fundraising their fundamental has change already and I believe even after such a huge run up it is still undervalued. So I don't think it's overvalued just because of the run up and I don't think it's a pump and dump. So I'll just sit through the big volatility and the big wash sale that we are in and do nothing. Doesn't matter how long it would take because I just believe this company is still undervalued. And regarding the political risk because that is it's one of the nine Chinese companies that are blacklisted on January 15 with Xiaomi. So I want to give you more of my opinion on this. I believe I have addressed this political risk a few times but regardlessly there is hope that the Biden administration will turn it over and right now we know that Xiaomi has already started to fight back so right now we think Xiaomi would lead the way first and if it's lifted for Xiaomi, the rest would likely follow. It would be more of a possibility. And today we saw news that China most allowing investment overseas stocks insurance says foreign exchange official. So 
China is allowing Chinese individual investors to invest overseas so they can spend up to 50,000 US dollars to buy stocks in the US market, for example. And I believe that would be a first step for the Chinese government to try to ease the relationship with the US and have a better and more friendly connection regarding to the financial industry between the two countries. So that might be a good sign leading to what we want. But with that said, I think the worst case scenario would be if it doesn't go through and it's still banned for US investors, that would mean US investors need to sell this stock before November and there would be a bigger possibility that Luo Kang would be back to Hong Kong to be listed and the rest of the investors would need to move their share to, to Hong Kong Stock Exchange. It might mean you either need to open a broker account in Hong Kong if it goes back to Hong Kong to be listed or you might need to sell it before for international investors outside the US. Luckin is the same. It's still going sideways to consolidate. It looks like the support at five is quite strong. YSG has been consolidating after breaking the all-time high, coming back to backtest the previous high. So the strongest one today was Baidu. It had an increase of 14% because several analysts has raised target of Baidu one of them being $350 per share. And Huami is still going strong. I'll try to do an in-depth video on Huami this weekend. Now I know JKS has been going sideways for a while now, but I think we just gotta be more patient with it. Let me show you something. So two weeks ago in my video that I gave you a warning for JKS, I saw that within a few months, the institution owners had increased 10% to be 198 and the institutional value was 1.5 billion dollars and it's more than 50 percent of the total market cap of JKS which were 2.9 billion right and today let's do an update check so this is today we see the institutional owners had increased another 10 percent to be 225 and the institutional value had increased another 20% to be 1.8 billion. And compared to the market cap of JKS, which is 2.7 billion now. So that means right now institutions own 68% of JKS. That is a big increase from two weeks ago that I checked. So I see this being a good sign. So I'll just be patient with JKS right now. Mesa, since we bought it at six point something three weeks ago, basically every day it has been going up. The earning was great. The business is growing steadily. And right now it's also stepping into electric aviation. So the fundamental has gotten better. So that's why I have decided to keep holding it for now. I still have my shares and the call options. So we have another penny stocks, Observa, ticker symbol OBSV. I bought two, three weeks ago and finally it has popped. <laughs> Today it had increased 27%. So as of right now, basically every single penny stocks I have recommended since I opened the channel, including Next, ESE, Good Nature Products and Wimmy, everyone had popped already and now OBSV. There is still one that I'm still waiting for it to pop. And that would be the last one that has not exploded yet. If you have been following my channel, you should know which one I'm talking about. And I'm still patiently waiting for it to pop. Okay. And that would be all the penny stocks and also LKCO. So if that last one popped, so basically my penny stocks recommendation would be a hundred percent. So I can't wait. <laughs> And for OBSV, we need to see whether it can stay above and push through the new all-time high. If the momentum is not strong enough, it might need to come back to backtest or consolidate a bit more. 
So that's it for today guys. I just wanted to give you a quick update and if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a big big like and write me a great comment and I will see you tomorrow. That's it guys. Hope you can find my video helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. Thank you.